I'm not complaining when Ubisoft had done things in the most irregular fashion with Uplay because I'm an Indonesian and I'm not exactly a middle class guy, but things had been quite a stretch for Ubisoft back in 2014. Their huge major budget AAA new IP is slammed down by the people who bought the game for a PC version just because it couldn't run well on their systems, especially those with two graphic cards using SLI or Crossfire. I'm happy to report that I am one of those peoples because now I can properly slam Ubisoft back to bend on my freaking knees. Screw you, screw you, screw you, screw you. Thankfully right now it's not even worth complaining. Crossfire is still an issue, but at least I can play it while it is off. Here's a little bit of gameplay footage of Watch Dogs running on my $440 laptop. What the honking? Some people say that the PC version of the game is deliberately handicapped in order to gain the sales of the console version, or maybe to increase the sales of the PS4 and the x bone which was very brand new at the time. Personally, I say this to the developer space. You're a freaking moron. You sacrificed the sales of your new IP that looks amazing and might have been a spectacular achievement to the PC to suck on Sony and Microsoft's dicks. Recently, Nvidia released an infographic highlighting the importance of PC gaming in the market right now. They also released an article giving up a lot of information that will contribute on the importance on PC gaming. There's also this infographics by Ignite GT that also highlights the importance of the sales of PC gaming. How about this direct comparison between PC gaming and console gaming by Digital Storm? How about this sales chart by VG Charts between 2005 and 2012, showing the comparison between the gamers on the PC and the gamers on consoles? Yes, the numbers of all the Nintendo, Xbox, and Microsoft console gamers combined certainly beats the PC, but notice how the PC gamers keep increasing as time comes by, while the console gamers are gradually decreasing. A lot of people are beginning to shy away from consoles and starting to dig PC, so it's much better if you just go ahead and treat them as if they were a part of your consumers. It is gonna be beneficial for you to make the PC version well optimized. This is your PC Metacritic score. And this is your PS4 Metacritic score. Freaking embarrassing. Let's not forget how you downgraded the graphics of the game into not looking like the one that was in the E3 demo. It turns out that with only a simple mod configuration from a few clever and concerned PC gamers, the E3 demo effects can be turned on. Ubisoft just didn't decide to fix it off or include it in their latest patch. For some goddamn freaking reason. D Seriously Ubisoft. How can you explain this to all of us? The peoples who play your games are patching your games. Actually, let's take that statement back and throw it to Bethesda as well. Like how I explained it in my Assassin's Creed Syndicate review, Ubisoft is slowly turning mentally insane. And one of their mentally insane practices is to release the same game every single mother freaking year. Apparently Watch Dogs is nothing but downgrading the driving mechanics of Driver San Francisco, slap in Assassin's Creed Stop Parkour, slap in a trainer, and everything is all set. According to Ubisoft, that is a brand new IP that will change the whole world, which is like saying this bucket full of spit is a new martini recipe. No, it isn't. This is about as lazy as a next-gen game that you can get. This game sucks a lot of big monkey ball sack, and I'm having tons of fun with it. Yeah, it's weird how you're still able to have fun in a bad game. Don't get me wrong, I really hate Watch Dogs. I would totally replace this video with me throwing F-bombs for like 10 straight minutes into this game when I wanted to, and still come to a conclusive opinion. But I'm just having tons and tons of fun with it. It's a really fun game to play. I'm just extremely disappointed by how this game turns out to be. Okay, okay. So, what if this game isn't hype? What if people don't get on board the hype train when the E3 demos were released? Well, you're still having the issue of having this game on a next-gen platform. The E3 demos make us to think that this is the true next-gen sandbox experience, but this game ends up being inferior to other sandbox games that were released on the previous gen. Okay, so what if those sandbox games don't exist? You might as well ask the question, what if I travel back in time to the 80s to show this game to a bunch of people who are still playing the NES? And you're gonna still get the same answer. Yeah, it would be quite a revolutionary title that will shape sandbox games and is truly a definitive next-gen AAA release. 
However, reality is harsh and that people who are looking for innovation might not just get what they wanted. In reality, Watch Dogs are not doing anything spectacularly new. What Watch Dogs did was to take every single game mechanics that are successful in the past couple of years, including from Ubisoft themselves, and just compile them together and play it safe. Oh, and let's add hacking there as a gimmick. The game's hacking mechanics are as follows. Traversing through different viewpoints on cameras, finding someone's personal identity, hacking through bank accounts and ATM machines, intercepting calls, and also literally killing someone by hacking through their pacemaker. There are a lot of scary things that you can do with the hacking power in Watch Dogs, and they're so scary that it might have been possible to execute in real life. So we're gonna see a lot of Aiden Pierce roaming around real life Chicago by the time this video ends. Speaking of Aiden Pierce, let's talk about the story. To be fair, the game's story sounds like a pretty cool story for a game, at least in how it starts off. It starts off rather well with some intense hacking session between Aiden and his partner, but then his partner went on a little too far, to the point where the problems are starting to get real personal. The people that Aiden were hacking managed to find Aiden, and he lost his niece in the result. Instead of moving on, Aiden swore revenge and wanted to find a way to take down the big bad guy who tasked on bringing his niece down. That's a very typical revenge flick that you'll see in most action movies today, and you know what? I am really rooting for Aiden Pierce to find out who taken his knees out. I feel the struggle of his journey, and the intro sequences on the first act is definitely quite personal. Seriously, the chemistry between Aiden and his sister is pretty damn good. So, an entire year and... Yeah, late. Yeah, I'm sorry, Nick. Really. Come here. Let's have a look at you. You look older. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> this is the first birthday without Lena. Oh, how's he doing? Still doesn't talk to anybody but me. Yolanda says it's his way of maintaining some sort of control. Yolanda? His therapist. She's helping him. It's good. Just slow. It's hard, but we're gonna get through it. Mm -hmm. This matters. You being here. I just need to make sure that things are different. Things are different. You and Jax are the most important people in my life. I'm not gonna stop watching out for you. <laughs> Always the big brother, huh? <laughs> it's just a shame that we didn't see this kind of chemistry in the rest of the game. Throughout the journey, Aiden also meets up with a lot of colorful characters, but they're ultimately forgettable. There's even one character that looks strangely like Henny from The Walking Dead, to the point where I can't even remember the character's name and just say, the guy that looks like Henny. Not even the same voice actors, I checked it myself. Aiden Pierce himself, while being a sympathetic guy in the intro, turns into a rather bland hero with nothing worth the value and not a lot of interesting things to back his characters up. There's nothing that can make him distinguishable from any other typical game protagonist. In fact, I think he's a template character that nobody bothers to change, at least after the intro. It's like opening a new PowerPoint presentation with a spectacular intro, only to find out that the rest of the contents are just the default three sign presets. And throughout the game, it really does feel that way, and I can prove that to you. Remember the amazing intro with the heartfelt dialogue exchange between the characters? I, I don't know what happened, but Ubisoft probably have kidnapped the writer of that intro and replaced it with Google Translate. Seriously, listen to this excerpt of dialogue and tell me if you feel a bit weird listening to it. You don't look 17. <sighs> Do I look like a bad boy? No, you look like a wild card. I hope I don't frighten you. What, do you have a reason to frighten me? Now you're being paranoid. What the hell are you even talking about? Talk like human beings! You did that amazingly with your sister in the intro. Are you even listening to what the frick are you saying? This is the kind of writing that Joss Whedon would endorse. Behind every amazing setup, there's gonna be a payoff. I can safely say that this one is almost as bad as Mass Effect 3's ending. In fact, it's probably even worse. Say what you want about it, at least the journey is somewhat interesting. 
The villains behind the assassination of Aiden's niece are actually quite a dick. And by dick, I mean they dick the entire audience out of their ridiculously stupid motivation that ultimately leads into an absolutely unsatisfying result. They also have one common trait. Not one villain in this entire game is intimidated by Aiden Pierce. Seriously, the villains are ridiculously laid off. If I somehow have the power of a million mercenaries in my hand and I hired those mercenaries to kill this one particular man who has unrestricted access to pretty much all of the city and every attempt that my mercenaries do to this man resulted only in him escaping, cheating death. So I get out and I'm gonna get- Whoa! 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 Whoa, that was really close. And mercenaries either dead on the street, crashing into the side of the store, killing a bunch of innocent peoples, blowing up the countryside, destroying a train station, or anything worse, I would go freaking nuts. I would be like Gary Oldman from Leon. I told you. Manny. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Aiden Pierce is an unstoppable beast that cannot be beaten by simple measures. And the villains did not act like he is, which makes them to be completely unconvincing. I'm not supposed to be spoiling a lot here, but the motivation of the villain is absolutely freaking unsatisfying. This is exactly word for word the motivation of the main villain in this entire game. Six year old girl. My niece died because you went too far. Oh, you're adorable. Blaming your family problems on me? Damien crossed the line, he made the Batman angry. What about me? What about me? What about me? <laughs> oh my god, you selfish entitled mother load of dickhead. I cannot believe that selfishness can be ex an acceptable villain motivation. S since when did selfishness can be an acceptable villain motivation? It can be for a protagonist because it's a good beginning for a character development, but a villain? No! You'll get Superboy Prime. You'll get Sasuke freaking Ochiha. Pre Shippuden. You'll get Deathstroke from Arrow. You'll get Jason freaking Todd. You'll get Joffrey Barentheon. The kind of people who has the biggest power in the world who has one common personality. Wine and wine and wine. You're not the only one suffering. He made me cripple. He took everything from me. What about me? What about my problems? What about the money they took away from me? I deserve more than you. Hey, dickhead. Remember that you're the one trying to be super edgy by going above and beyond the mission protocol. Say what you want about Aiden. At least he's trying to be responsible. You come in here stalking and harassing Aiden's sister instead of, oh, I don't know, calling him the freak over and you blame Aiden for all of your mistakes. Yeah, exactly. Because that's what a lot of successful people do. You hypocrite. On a side note, I guess Aiden should be thrown to this face as well. But at least he learns from it. I don't know how Watch Dogs is able to screw this one up into oblivion. It has a formula of an action movie but the journey of a PowerPoint template. I don't get it. The Assassin's Creed games get the villains right. Even if the villains aren't menacing, at least the emotions that come from trying to kill the villains are integral to the story. The only conclusion that I can take from all of this is that both the villains and Aiden Pierce are Mary Sue characters. So to sum up, the story of Watch Dogs is a battle between a Mary Sue character with a bunch of Mary Sue villains and... I'm sorry, I, I cannot take a side. These characters are boring and unrelatable. Their entire contribution to the whole game is only to making things a whole lot worse. If you somehow can get past the gameplay, which is nothing but playing it completely safe and sound, the awfully boring story steals the deal. Amazing intro, can't argue with it. But the journey and the ending and the cock teasing of a freaking sequel is just horrible. Watch Dogs, in all of its technical aspects, is a pretty bad video game. The story sucked, the gameplay is too old for a next-gen console, the game mechanics are similar if not inferior to the games that we have seen in the past, there's not a lot of things that Watch Dogs can offer me that can be considered innovative and new, and especially not the kind that I would put for a next-gen title. Don't get me wrong, I have fun playing this game, and if I'm gonna rate the game based on my experience, I'm definitely going to give it a higher rating. However, even if I lower my expectations to this game, I will still rate it incredibly low because this game has elements that are outdated and cannot be considered a true next-gen experience. Yeah, we're still transitioning, but come on, if you're transitioning to the next-gen, then your game should be at least significantly better than your last. 
but then again, this game was also released in the last gen, so I guess I shouldn't be complaining. The only thing that Watch Dogs did great is the fact that they can actually pull off Ubisoft from making another Assassin's Creed. Even though with this game, they kind of are making another Assassin's Creed. If you like this game, absolutely cool. It's wrong for me to say that you're a moron or you're a stupid freak just for liking Watch Dogs. You can go and like any games that you want and I won't ban you for it, but I personally did not like this game. My verdict is 2 stars out of 5. This game is meh. While I do think it has potential, I don't think it's gonna last long. That's all my review for Watch underscore Dogs, if you prefer to call the game that. If you like this, you can go ahead and click the like button and click the subscribe button and definitely thanks for watching.